Well, welcome back, everybody. See, that wasn't too bad, you know. It wasn't too long of a wait. We got another bit of Overwatch coming up. We were just waiting for the teams to get into the lobby. But if you're just joining us, welcome back to the Overwatch League. This is what I believe to be day two. Um, the, the hours blend into each other, you know, with the lockdown and everything else. But my name's Brennan. I'm joined by Sideshow. And uh, and we're here to watch some more Overwatch. We just watched... Um, I'm not going to spoil it, actually, in case somebody wants to watch the VOD back. But it was a good match between Chengdu and Shanghai. You should go back and watch it if you are watching this in the future. I'm yeah. confusing my own brain now by yeah. talking Don't about tell this. them about the reverse sweep though, Brent. Don't tell them about the reverse sweep. Okay, yeah, I won't tell them about the reverse sweep, but we've got another match coming up. This one's for all you live viewers at home. You're all watching. You probably, you know, it's probably breakfast time or something. I'm not too sure, you know. Uh, you know, tweet at me. What are you having for breakfast? I'm interested, <laughs> truly. But the, uh, the 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 match that's coming up is going to be Guangzhou Charge versus the Hangzhou Hangzhou Spark. I should say, bit of a tongue twister if you're not familiar with the uh, the Mandarin language. But uh, it's going to be uh, you're, you're fluent. Oh, I'm fluent, Josh. Yeah, Ni Hao. Um, that's about it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. That's all you need. I like yeah. to call this one the Battle of the Joes, the Battle of the Average Joes. There. You think these teams are average? I think that both of these teams will be top 10 teams. I think that both of these teams should be aiming for um, top kind of playoff areas, like top mm -hmm. six, I think would be good for both of these teams. I'd in agree. The long run. Yep. I think that Spark, uh, what we've seen from them throughout 2019 was that they were a team that was slow to adapt to metas. So I'm concerned for them a little bit when it comes to hero pools to be able to really hit that uh, top gear. Seems to take them multiple weeks. Thankfully, they've had multiple weeks in order to <laughs> learn this meta. So, yeah, this is a bit of an unusual one. But Guangzhou, I've been really high on. I mean, all in the preseason, I was talking this team up. And then yep. when it actually came to ranking the teams in the preseason, I ended up putting them somewhere like eighth rather than the original fourth. That I so gas them up and then bring them down. Yeah, basically. But I do think that this is a very, very powerful roster if they unlock yeah. the right pieces. And particularly, I'm looking for Nero. I think this could be a real breakout year for him becoming a truly elite oh, I talent. Agree. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that one. Well, let's let's take a look at the starting rosters for the uh, the Hangzhou Spark here as I try and bring it up here. Oh, there it is. Beautiful stuff. I'm actually just... Don't have a second monitor. You've got to work with someone here. You've got to work with me. But uh, I, I actually criticized the Hangzhou Spark uh, team, the organization, so to speak, because they didn't make that many adjustments. Now, um, on the other side of the coin, there's certain people like Wolf um, who think that that's actually a good thing because you're building on what was good. This was a playoff worthy team. But I do think that uh, you need to make some adjustments to the team other than just adding, who, who did they add? Coldest and Mika. Uh, the support yes, duo, yeah. uh, and that's an interesting one because those are two uh, Mandarin-speaking players, two Chinese players, uh, which don't really gel with the current mix of these players. So, can't really see a scenario where they would see playtime, um, but they are sticking with pretty much what they know, uh, and that's yeah. the previous roster from this uh, from last year. I do think that they, to take a slight tangent, I do think that they'll try and introduce Coldest at some point because mechanically he seems to be a bit of an upgrade over Bebe. And if they can work kind of the language barrier uh, like yeah. they did with Gushui, I could see that happening. But you take a look, at, a look at the roster that they're actually fielding tonight. They're not starting with Adora, which is something that they did yesterday, and that didn't work particularly well for them. I'm, I'm not a big fan of Adora's like a, a mechanical ability on a lot of these heroes. He plays like the Genji, the Farah, this kind of stuff. But yeah, I feel like I'd rather give the opportunities to Bazi. Um, and then they're, they're running Sash in on off tank, which this is, is what they did for the final map. So. Uh, Hangzhou Spark yeah. yesterday managed to complete the reverse sweep against Chengdu and it was Sashin coming in on the final map on off tank which was the uh, it was a difference in the roster I'm not going to say that was the difference maker but it's particularly interesting because Sashin is a DPS player at heart that's what he's known for but he's played a lot of off tank before in the past um, he played a little bit of the flex diva stuff while he was playing in Korean contenders and then in the Overwatch League almost all of his playtime has actually been on off tank uh, with slight kind of transitions over to play DPS back mm -hmm. before we had 2-2-2. So this is a player that's very capable on the hog and knows how to play the D.Va and for some reason they are starting to run him over Rhea. So maybe it indicates that they're start starting to move away from purely D.Va yeah. and believe that he is better at the Roadhog, at the Sigma, this kind of stuff. Just a more it's versatile It's interesting, isn't tank. it? It really is interesting because Rhea is not a player that we think of as a slouch. He no. is—he was one of the shining spots of this team last year, yeah. I would argue, alongside, um, you know, uh, Gushui as the tank line. Um, but on the other side of the coin, we've got, of course, 
two teams to play a match. You need two teams at the end of the day. Sometimes you can have three. I don't really know what games you'd be watching <laughs> if there were three. But in this case, we've just got two, and it's the Guangzhou Charge roster. And uh, we're both very high up on this roster in terms of the mechanical individual prowess of each member. You've got... Uh, you know, Nero and Happy as a DPS duo, I mean, you can't really argue with these two guys. They do mean business every time they're put into the server. Yeah, and particularly when we have a sniper meta like we have at the moment, where Happy can play the Widowmaker and also the Hanzo. Now, what I really want to see from him, and what I agree with Wolf when he was casting the Guangzhou Charge yesterday, is that Happy can't just force the Widowmaker. He is potentially one of the best Widowmakers that we have in the league. We have yet to see him go head to head with a lot of different people, but Happy's been putting up ridiculous numbers last year and all throughout his career. But he can't just force the Widowmaker. We've yeah. already seen that in our previous match, that it just doesn't work all the time. So so I want to see a bit more of a um, kind of proactive measure from Happy to move over to the Hanzo, for example, when it just isn't working for him on the Widow. Krong is the person that I really want to highlight, though, because this guy was fantastic on off-tank when he was playing in Korean Contenders, and now coming in, playing the Sigma most of the time for this team, he's continued to be a very, very capable player. So even though the Guangzhou Charge lost Hopper to the NYXL, they mm -hmm. have not downgraded, in my opinion, in 2020. This Rio Krong the tank line should be very stable across every single hero in the game. Yeah, we, we brushed over the support line as well, of course, which is going to be Shu Neptuno. Um, two very, very well-established uh, players. Shu, potentially one of the best flex support players that we've got in the league in Neptuno for his aggressive play style. Uh, we are ready to head into the match very soon, and it is bound to be a good one. The map pool uh, that we are going to be seeing, the map set, I should say. Um, take it away, Josh, as I can't see it at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we got Oasis, Dorado, Eichenwald, Hanamura, and Nepal. So different maps previous, uh, to what we've seen previously, uh, apart from Dorado and Eichenwald. Um, yeah. But as we've seen, it's a lot about this uh, double double shield kind of lineup with the Orisa and the Sigma. And Pharah, wherever you can play it, is still going to be pretty powerful, especially on Oasis. So it'd be interesting to see if Nero decides to bring that out, because he's got a very, very good Pharah on him. Yeah, and we'll see if they can make the adjustments necessary. Yesterday, as you said, Wolf criticized Happy, in my opinion, rightly so as well, for him sticking with the uh, Widowmaker in a lot of scenarios where it wasn't quite as ideal. And I feel like this is actually something that needs to be kind of uh, almost forged out of Guangzhou Charge. You know, you've got to put them back in the furnace, heat them up a little bit, stick them on the anvil and beat it out of them, you know, because uh, <laughs> they, they, they tend to... Uh, in a metaphorical they, sense. In a metaphorical sense, of course, yes. Sure. Uh, We're not advocating but, burning... No, 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 I'm, 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 say, I'm saying that they are, the Guangzhou Charge are like, you know, you've got to take the, the cold steel ingot that they are uh, and you've got to reheat it up and kind of just, you know, get the, the you know, just kind of molded into whatever you want. I feel like uh, all of your smelting knowledge comes from RuneScape. You would be correct about that one, Josh. <laughs> um, I, I also like watching a lot of the blacksmithing videos on YouTube. It's good to, to get into a little rabbit hole wow, with that the, one. The quarantine um, has been rough on you, hasn't it? I did this before quarantine. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm a bit of an insane individual. The quarantine definitely doesn't help. I'm slowly losing it. But uh, we're about to head into the match at hand anyway. We've got the Hongzhou Spark versus the Chong. Uh, oh, sorry, I don't know what to do. The Guangzhou Charge. There you go. And uh, he's going to be rolling out, out here. Games, for, for the love of God. I really should, games. shouldn't I? I it's really the charge should. Charge and the Spark. Charge and the Spark. And they're, they're having at it. And we're going to see a difference here. Double Shield being run by both teams, but uh, it's going to be the Charge using the right hand instead of the Sigma. Interesting moves. The wall is going to come up. It's going to be pushing them apart. Oh. Nice halt into the middle pit gonna bring Krong out of the fight and that's almost as good as a kill in a lot of scenarios because he's gonna waddle his way up the stairs doesn't happen though he gets sent to the back of the respawn queue the point is gonna to be a long though as long as your charge ends up capping it early the question is can they hold on to it for much longer it feels like the spark have a bit of a, a stronger foothold on this one yeah, that's an absolute gift there. The Hangzhou Spark have just given them a free capture point. Because as soon as Kong got sucked uh -oh. into that pit, they should have had the advantage. Well, Godsby's going to try and clutch this one up, but I mean, the Guangzhou Charge is the thing. You can never count them out. They've got the mechanical. <laughs> Brings that as well with the help of Assassin. But still, they're on this point holding on. was perfect, obliterated Krong, took him out almost as instantly as he was able to set foot on the point, and finally they flip it over. And you start to see a couple of hero swaps coming out from the charge. That is a free 35%, because the spark just didn't get onto the point properly. 
Uh, and that's that, that's unfortunate for them. They got a perfect halt onto Krong and sucked in onto the low ground, but weren't able to capitalize properly. And now the Charge are going to be able to re-engage. They've actually swapped Krong over to the Sigma, so running a bit more of a default double shield. But they don't have the Zen to be able to shield break. So Shu on the Ana here, I don't think that's optimal. But Nero hitting shots like that is perfect. Yep, these opening picks, I think you might get to see this a lot, honestly, with this charge roster. And it's those kind of plays that really open things up. The amplification matrix by charge gets walled off instantly. Now we see the supercharger coming out. Nero gonna prioritize that. He realizes that is the target they need to get rid of. Gravitic flux straight up into the air, sends them straight back down again. The charge, they have enough picks here. Well, should be necessary, but Gushway drive by in the corridors. He's gonna end up taking out Nero, beats him down as well. The Discord Orb assisted with that one. And Hongjo Spark are in a very good position to just keep holding on to this. I thought that was gonna go the way of charge, but I think it just didn't. I think the Ana is really getting very minimal value here. And now Shu switches over to the Zen, which I think is just the down, downright better composition. You've got better shield break, the Discord Orb helps you melt people better. Uh, the problem is even the biotic grenade, which normally would be such a great win condition, you, it just gets removed because you put down the uh, immortality field from IDK and everybody outlasts it. Yep. Bazzi with the pick on the happy there is a beautiful thing if you are a Spark fan. Nice little fadeaway icicle as well. Now the That's charge so they have. They've still got the high ground, but look at this, they got to commit because the time is running low. The Dragon Strike is going to split them up. The Freeze onto Sassy, but Immortality Field will keep him at least topped up. He won't be falling, but oh my word, the halt straight into the Discord. assassin has gone off the map. And an opportunity now for Guangzhou Charge to reassess where they want to be putting into this here. And maybe though, it feels like a lot of individual 1v1s just kicking off all over the place. Maybe it gets the better of Nero. Still though, the charge, they flip the point in their favor. This is necessary for them. Great halt comes out from Rio. If they can get a kill into Godsby, it would be quite nice. Juicy little cherry on top, but unable to do so. The peel was there from the spark. Shu has had such enormous impacts in switching over to the Zen. Able to pick off Bebe, able to charge up 70% of his transcendence. They utilized their ults in the previous fight, whatever they had to be able to take that over. They absolutely had to. But they're still in a pretty good position. Bazzi's the only person on the spot that has an ult to use. And they're really in one decent fight kind of territory. Krong with a Gravitic Flux could seal this round, essentially, for the charge. And Let's all thanks to do. that free 35% in the beginning of the round. And you see charge just holding on to what they've got. Which is the point in this scenario. We see the Gravitic Flux being used by Krong. He tries to get at least any sort of value out of it, but no one's really peeking from the spark. But oh. there you go. He sent Godspeed straight up into the air, and that gave Happy the opportunity to get him the quick 1-2. Godspeed out of the fight. No Resurrect available, obviously not running the Mercy, so he's not going to be back in this fight, and Happy's just hitting heads. Bazzi falling, crumbles the spark in a disaster. Disastrous position, and they're not even able to touch the point here. Happy just putting on an absolute show for us. Yeah, and that would have made such... I mean, I, I hate to keep harping on about it, but it would have made such an enormous difference if the Spark had been able to actually capture that first point, or at least stop the charge from capturing it. That was only two one fights that the charge had to, had to complete. They won one in order to flip the point back in their favor, and then they won that final one at the end. The Blizzard from Bazzi, absolutely useless because Shu had already charged up his Transcendence like a mad lad. And then Happy just hit shots all over the place. And this is why it's so frustrating to see Happy completely hit his head against a brick wall over and over again on the Widowmaker. Because his, his Hanzo is also spectacular. And now we're going to see some switches in the compositions. Very happy to see Happy now switching over to the Widowmaker. Makes me happy, makes Charge fans happy. How many times can I say happy in a sentence before I get fired? Well, we're going to find out tonight. The uh, the charge have taken the high ground pretty early on. And the, the spark are just looking for an opening now. Just a lot of rotations now, and that's going to be the name of the game. The high ground eventually given up here. You can see playing quite far back here. Shu just wants to heal up the rest of his team, try and build up a quick little nano boost. Already on 30%. The ice wall from the spark now looking for opportunities. Big bio nade from Shu, but... It's going to be meaning that they do get an equal trade here as Rio just gets destroyed, demolished, taken out the point, but both teams lose a tank. 
And the charge, when they have the high ground like this, they will uh, abuse it, they're gonna use it, and they're gonna clean you off the point, Happy. Three kills. In case you can't read the kill feed, sometimes I miss it, but there it is, give them the four. Job's done. That's pretty huge, yeah. Uh, the way that these two compositions interact is that there's a lot of pressure on Rio's shield. He has to hold far forward because he wants to get engaged and aggressive really early on. But the whole of the Hangzhou Spark really have to play around each other. And good ends are being put in weird situations because neither team could really take the high ground from each other because they don't have a Lucio. So they just have to engage through the front really slowly and try and take the shield wall. So the question becomes, can Rio get bursted down and can Kron get demet before anybody on the spark dies? Or can Godfrey get a pick? Because that's what they're relying on right now, these off angles. Godfrey's searching for something. I mean, if the mechanics are there, he's able oh, to do it, but he just close. missed the shot. But look at that, that headshot onto Rio set him up. And now he got boosted up there by the enemy's ice wall, but a dragon strike still hits the mark and it's gonna do what he intended to, splitting up the charge them up and away, but Nana Nana Boost is unleashed here. You can see Kron just try to save his team, but he's caught out of position. Wonderful war by Bazzi. Able to set that one up for the rest of his team here. Still, I feel like I don't want to count the charge out because Happy, he's on a flank. He's on a mad one. Bazzi ends up falling. Still, look at Sassin. He has to try and keep his shield up because Happy is such a nuisance on the flank here. Flashbang comes out. Happy don't force the back away. He can't really be taking this 1v1 now. The shield recharged up. He dodges the rock. Quick little sidestep. The headshot's coming out. Sassin, he's being punished. He's being pressured from every single angle. Godspeed finally puts an end to it. And now the Hung Show Spark. You're gonna have to start expending a couple of ultimates to win this one. We do take out Rio. But Nero flexing over to the Tracer. I still think that this is gonna be in the Spark's hand. This should be their win with the picks they've got. But they are gonna be happy to charge, that is, for the amount of progress they managed to get onto that point. Definitely. 82% is fantastic. But the composition that Spark are running is better when it's in control of the point. So now the pressure is on the charge to break it. And they're moving over, they're gonna change their composition up slightly. Nero going back over the May, which is what he was been playing for the majority of the round. And Happy though now on the hands of. So Vanna has better shield break than the McCree. And only a small amount, but you can get it from, uh, you, you can also get a bunch of different picks with it. See if you can hold people in. That's what the spark are aiming for now. Or See if they can hold people in they pressure. around to the high ground. Gooshway falling very, very low, has to back off and use the Fortify. He has the Supercharger, that's going to be the win condition for them. Bomb sent out, actually gets no value. Kronk, I don't know if he was pressured down to low HP and had to use the South Destruct, but not ideal for them. Nana Boost now going to be used here onto Rio, but even with the Nana Boost, even with the damage mitigation, he just gets absolutely chunked down by the Amp Matrix, but he takes out the Supercharger, and that's important for them. Forcing out the Transcendence now from them, look at that! The my goodness, Nerf Shatter sent straight up into the air, but the Hulk goes for the charge, he pins him against the wall. Gushui goes down, they try, they are gonna end up trading, but Nero, I mean, he's got the skills, he's got the icicles, and it's enough damage to really just lay into them here. The charge are in control of the objective, in control of the point, and now 10% remains between them taking away map one. You can see the change being made, the Spark have to get on the point, Gushui on Wrecking Ball. Yeah, Nero's going to be looking for a freeze as well, and he's got his Blizzard to play aggressively too, so this absolutely should be a charge victory. War's going to block them off. Gushui, great immortality field, just in the nick of time. The Blizzard is now going to get used here. The Dragon Strike on top, it all collapses. It all layers on top of one another, and that is going to be so many picks going in the way of Charge's favor. It'll be a miracle now for the Spark to try and take this one, but I think we are going to be just seconds away now, and there you have it. Guangzhou Charge is going to be taking map number one in quite a convincing fashion and really playing to a lot of their strengths throughout this entire uh, map, at least from what we've seen. Yeah, great work there from the Guangzhou Charge. I think that they uh, understood how to play their composition very well and they were able to uh, really put Happy in a good position to succeed. I think everybody was playing lights out across the board for Guangzhou. Nero hitting yep. a bunch of his different icicle shots too, being able to pressure out Godsby uh, whenever he was uh, getting aggressive into him. The, the Guangzhou charge team just seems like they're very comfortable with this meta. And 
with the Chengdu versus Dragons game, which was all about how do the teams play dive, how are they being able to control space, are they going to win the Wrecking Ball Fire matchup, this is very much which team is better at the meta comps mm -hmm. of the, the shield break, the double shield, the May. These are what both of these teams have played a lot of, and neither really like to deviate that far away from that base. Well, we're going to find out if the, uh, the Hongzhou Spark can actually turn this one around, currently leading 1-0 to the charge. We're going to find out after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zipchair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor. Hello everybody, welcome back once more to the series between the Guangzhou Charge versus the Hangzhou Spark. We are currently one map in and the Guangzhou Charge are leading. And it's been a bit of a one-sided affair. Of course, my name's Bren, I'm joined by Sideshow. He's either in this box or that box. We'll never know the answer, or at least I won't know the answer. You guys at home know the answer because you're watching, obviously. Me, personally, not too sure. But it doesn't matter because we've got some Overwatch that we're watching. And it's been a while, Josh. I, got, I was reflecting on this in this short break that we've had. It's been five weeks since we, since we last commentated a match. Five weeks. Yeah, that, that has been yeah. an incredibly long time, actually. It's felt like eons. Uh, yeah. since we've casted some Overwatch, but uh, guess what? The meta hasn't really shifted that much. It kind of no. ping-ponged around a little bit, but a lot of May McCree still being played. Double Shield, kind of uh, a bit of echoes of last season's playoffs as well, but yep. it, it's, it's, it's in a good place. We're able to see teams kind of exercise their style. Mm -hmm. You're not forced to play a certain six heroes. You can kind of play what you want and get away with it as long as those play to your strengths. 
Yeah. And we are going to see the teams going into the match pretty shortly. I believe we had one substitution being made. Um, it was uh, Dora, I believe, going yes. in. Yes, Adora um, coming in for the Spark. Yeah. So I, that's, I think uh, it's an interesting one. Yeah, this points me towards Adora playing the Farah because it seems like Buzzy is their lock for the May, and I would expect him to come in if they were going to play some Doomfist or something like that, which we've seen a couple of teams experiment with. But Adora tends to be their Genji and their Farah player. And on Dorado, I'm expecting the Farah. And what I would love is if Nero tries to match it because I mm -hmm. I, I love Farah 1v1s. They're incredibly entertaining to watch. And Nero. 2019, towards the end of the playoffs, just showcased a wonderful Farah that we didn't really know he had. So I want to see more of it this year. Yep. I think Nero might be one of the best Western DPS players we have um, in the league. Yeah. Um, and making a name for it. I, I think last year he was one of my candidates for Rookie of the Year. Um, he definitely proved it with a lot of his play. Definitely. Um, uh, and I'm expecting, I think we both are expecting quite big things from him but we'll see now because it looks like happy is just kind of teasing uh one of his roles you know he didn't let stray comments sway him away from it he is teasing the idea of a bit of widowmaker i mean happy quite synonymous with that hero in a lot of ways but he is just searching for an opening pick i believe um seeing if they're going to be running the defensive farah they're not so he's going to be going back in seeing if he can make a switch maybe over to the hanzo uh most likely, yep. So gonna be making that switch over. I like this as well. So mashing them in, in sort of a mirror composition, in fact, a complete mirror composition. And uh, you want that hands out just for that extra shield break. Yep, Holt's coming up. Just get a bit of shield, but the shield break. Eventually, the spark will have to rotate around to the archway. Just put down a little bit of pressure, building up a couple of their ultimates. The door at 25%. And now the real battle begins. Mm -hmm. And neither team going for that Farah at the moment, so perhaps that was a spark defensive, uh, sorry, a spark offensive strategy. But for now, both teams just kind of playing the meta, playing what they were playing for most of the time previously. Ooh, happy going down though. Bebe found that pick. It's not bad, Sunshine, not bad at all. The Holt just uh, going to be pulling the spark up. Nothing to really combo with it though. And uh, the spark going to be happy to just hold on to this one. They need to wait for Happy to come back up. That's a charge to. See if they can re-push this one now. The name of the game is going to be looking for a pick off, just to, like that. If that icicle had landed just a little bit further up, Godspeed probably wouldn't be standing there right now. Might have just been dead. Oh, nice shot from Adora as well. They're slowly moving the car forward and looking for opportunities with Happy. These halts are so important. That's really what can break things here. You want to halt people around shields, above obstacles, see if you can combo them with shots from Nero, shots from Happy, rocks yep. from Krong. That's really what the charge are looking for. Pay attention to the way Godspeed is playing around that central pillar as well. Because, oh my goodness, Happy. He's fallen very, very low. And the peel is there, actually, from IDK. IDK waiting in the back line, slammed in the shots, forced him to go backwards. Meanwhile, that has allowed the charge to get a bit of a, a foothold here. They want to try and push into this, but the amplification matrix will push them back. Charge still in control of the objective, not letting them get any more sort of space. And now the 1v1 into the corridors. Godsby ends up coming out on top, and that is his go time. He can take a more aggressive angle straight into them. Nice little shot there from him, Neptuno falling. And the Hongzhou Spark are looking quite clean and quite clinical. They certainly are, and you look at the ults that were traded in that fight. Neptuno used his amp matrix, uh, and that's pretty good, but it forced the aggression out of Spark. Godspeed got the flank, and they used the Blizzard from Adora as well. This is all fine, and the ult advantage is now in favor of the charge, but Gushu and Sashin are about to get their ults up as well. So if Spark cycle this properly, and utilize uh, Sashin and Gushue's ultimates, they can continue to reset the charge with only a minute left on the clock. Because the charge took so long to even get in position in the first place, they might not even get in any kind of place to utilize this Blizzard or this Flux. Oh, Nero, though. This is really smart. This is going to force okay. positioning. And the Spark don't even but realize they, they don't realize this. I mean, I, I mean, maybe it's just the plat player in me, but I, I, my internal mind was screaming, nah, just run it all the way in. You know, they won't <laughs> notice. I they don't notice. think that would work. That might be why you lose your games. You're trying to back cap all the time. I mean, it works in the level I'm playing at, Josh. I'm not going to lie. It, okay, it charge, work. charge have bought time for them to get their tank ults up as well. Or it was near enough. Rio's going to have his towards the end of the fight. But with only 30 seconds left, the earlier supercharger from the Gushui and this flux from Sashin could just end this before it's even begun. Yeah, it's... 
going to be a lot on the ultimate execution from the Nero. Seconds. Nero forced to use his ice block and the ice wall defensively. These teams do not have much to work with, but the Charger are really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Quite literally, unable to really push themselves forward here into Gushui's Supercharger. They can't play these angles, otherwise they will get destroyed. Great Two patience, seconds remaining. Though. Somebody does cut uh, touch the card, so the other time is going to start to tick now, but the Dragon Strike is going to split them up. Kron going down, he didn't get to use his Gravitic Flux. Start to see them getting frozen here. And it looks like the Spark are really coming out on top. The Pinks, uh, or the Picks are going their way completely. No one touching the card in the time, or not able to get close enough to it at least. And the Spark are going to be very happy with that. How many times have we seen a full hold on Dorado recently? It feels yeah. like a lot. Yep, it is a lot. It's a very difficult choke point to push, and normally the way that we would see those choke points be pushed in previous years was that you had to build up an alt advantage and really expend a lot to be able to get through that archway. The thing is, when you're playing against double shield, it takes you a long time to build those ults up in the first place. It took them about two minutes to be able to build all of their ults there, the charge, yep. because they kept getting picked off. The halts were really good from Gushui. The shots were great from Godsby as well. They found the picks when they needed them to turn fights that otherwise would have allowed charge to build up their ults. So that, that was great clutch picks when required from the spark and the charge were just left completely helpless. They just couldn't build their ultimates up to even cycle them for later pushes. You could criticize them for being slow, sure, but th there was really no way that they could push that. There was no no system by which they could have manufactured themselves an ult advantage. They just needed to play for picks and they never found them. Well, we'll see now on the opposite side of things. The roles have reversed. It's going to be the Sparks' time to try and push this one. Um, still a winnable scenario for the charge. I don't want to count them out just yet because uh, as hard as it was for them to push into it, the roles, when they're reversed like this, it's often equally But, but here's the to But here's the it. thing. The Spark only need one pick, and the charge just never found that at all in their entire push. It wasn't so much their positioning. It wasn't their ultimates. They just didn't find the pick. They kept trying the right things, but they never found it. So if Gushui can find one good halt, or if uh, Godspeed can find one good arrow, they will crack this wide open. All I'm saying is, Josh, I've seen them win these. True. You know I mean? True. I've, I've seen them win these. I've also uh, lost these before. Yeah, very losable for the charge, but we'll see. They, they make the rotation now early over to choke point they want to try and defend this one but they have to play perfectly they cannot give up a single pick the shields are so hard to break through the hold to stun happy that forces out the immortality field early that's a big cooldown now that the charge have expended we'll see if they can try and push this one in spark slowly gaining so much space happy forced to play so far back here desperately trying to work in an angle seeing if he can get a pick off now assassin loads up the accretion doesn't find anything with it getting frozen up now the shield Ooh, that pick up onto Nero, and that could be it. Assassin falls though, a one for one trade, but that holds straight in. Neptuno falls, and you've just lost one of your main healers. It's just Shu with the heals provided, and the Spark just roll it in. They are going to take map number two, and it is just a, a bit of a ping pongy, uh, ping pongy kind of game, if you will. One side rolls one, and then the next map comes around, and Spark gets to play towards their strengths. Interesting, interesting across the board. And yeah, uh, yeah uh, I gotta say, it's it's surprising that Guangzhou Charge, a team with this much mechanical skill packed into it, weren't able to find an opening pick or something when they were attacking that side on Dorado. But uh, maybe just yeah. a map that they're quite uncomfortable with, playing compositions that they're uncomfortable with. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even think that they're uncomfortable on those comps particularly. They just weren't yeah. able to find the space to get the picks in the first place when they were pushing. And you saw there when they were on the defense, they just played really passive. They gave Hangzhou all the space in the world. And th at that point, you're guaranteed to lose someone eventually because you have to cover so many angles. You're giving the han enemy Hanzo and the enemy Sigma opportunities to spam you, poke you, to be able to find picks. So they, they failed to control space effectively there on, on Dorado. Good news for them, they're heading over to Eichenwald, which is a totally different map. It plays very differently. Yes, it does have that snarly choke point at the beginning, but generally speaking, you don't see full holes as often. Having said that, we did see one in our previous game, so it's it's the era of full holds, apparently. Well, we'll see what happens now as we head into a break, but after that, we've got our game break with our analysts.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Rank up with America's first and only nationwide 5G network. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hello everybody, welcome to Game Break, presented by Cheesy Grooves, and you're joined by your two analysts, of course, Brennan Hook and Joshua Wilkinson, and boy, oh boy, do we have some plays to break down for you here today. Uh, we certainly do, so I want to jump straight into it and go into your crunch time, presented by Cheesy mm -hmm. Grooves. Wow. Uh, so, let's let's take a look, actually, at the opening setup of the Hangzhou Spike versus the Guangzhou Charge. This was the very first round, this is where Kron got sucked into the pit. So I want to kind of showcase what was going on here. So as you can see from uh, from Godsby's point of view, the Guangzhou Charge are positioned all around here, and the Hangzhou Spark have got kind of a circle around the point. And it's actually a, a huge halt that comes out from Rio that you can see it here. It sucks all of these guys into the pit. So that's Godsby, that's uh, Gushue, sorry, not Godsby, that's uh, Bazi, Gushue, and Sashin all falling into the pit there. And so that's what kind of sets this up. It's just a brawl right at the bottom. Then Krong gets sucked into the pit as well, and he ends up falling down there. And this is this weird situation where now Krong's got an immortality field just brawling at the bottom of him. That immortality field ends up being huge in Neptuno because it stops this rotation coming in just at the right time. And look, just as this is about to cap, they come up top and the point caps. That then leads to a 35% increase for the Guangzhou charge and they're able to take this round and just kind of steal it away from the, <laughs> the Hangzhou spark kind of a ridiculous situation but you love to see it just dunking people into the well so there's well, your crunch time presented by cheese it grooves that was a beautiful play Josh but I've got a cheese it grooves breakdown of my own a little while ago I actually asked the lovely people who are watching this show to uh, message me tweet at me your breakfast and I've got a lot of responses that oh, I wasn't right. expecting so okay. we've got uh, Jesse Locke who's having a side of raisin Bren with Sideshow um, of Overwatch for breakfast mm, with a smirky lovely. face. Not sure if that's an innuendo or not, but we'll brush past it. Um, someone's having a cranberry biscuit and, nice. uh, and and something else as a 2 a.m. snack. Wonderful, Adam. I'm so glad that you're uh, you're keeping your energy levels up. Um, someone else had some Lucio's. Wonderful as well. Ah, Always going to plug in those ones. Of course. Ah, Bryce Patterson. I had some nice and lovely cheese it grooves followed by ah. it's a mind crunch with a little smiley face so <laughs> thank you bryce patterson for for allowing me to fit in one more um for for, for the roles but 
That's going to be our, uh, our game break, at least. We hope it was at least um, some sort of insightfulness to, to your lives um, on this fine evening. Uh, is it evening? It's, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It's evening Pacific somewhere, time for right? me. It's it is evening. evening. It's always evening somewhere in the world. But uh, I think I'm making my producers angry. So we're going to cut to a break, <laughs> but when we come back, we've got Map 3 coming up. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. Welcome back, everybody. Yep, that was our game break. Um, we weren't too long, were we? It wasn't that hard to wait for us. But we are back, and we are going to be heading into map three of this series between the Guangzhou Charge and the Hangzhou Spark soon enough. Uh, but first, you know, I just want to thank, uh, you know, you lovely people for sending me in your, your breakfast ideas. Wonderful stuff. Personally, me, Josh, I like a good bagel with avocado and cream cheese. Yeah. Uh, that's to be my go-to. It's a good shout. Um, my my go-to is uh, oats, like making porridge with oats, and you put yep. like frozen fruit into the oats and cook it together. Ooh. Mm, super. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Uh, I mean, we, we it sounds like we have quite healthy breakfasts. Although I will say, it's not healthy when you have it seven days in a row. Um, the avocado and cream cheese really adds up. It's a lot of protein, <laughs> though. So yeah, I mean it's good for the gains, the gains, but but I just gains. haven't I haven't been working out. So the the no. I tell you it's instead of been going into the uh, into the biceps, it's been going straight into the premature dad stomach. You, um, you that should, I should be, be getting. working out more than anybody else. You're the only person I know that has a home <laughs> gym in quarantine. Yep, I set it up. Um, it's there. Um, other people have been making usage of it in in the house that I'm in, but me personally, I mean to be fair, no, I tell a lie. I I do use it, but it's. Uh, you know, life's just been catching up, you know. you got to work true. out, though. you got to stay sane in these times of quarantine. Thankfully, I've got the Overwatch League coming up. Uh, I say yeah. coming up like I'm not already casting it, but <laughs> we've got the uh, the Overwatch League to keep ourselves busy. Uh, but, yeah, you got to stay active as well. And that's a that's a that's uh, actually a command from me to everybody listening to this. Make sure yeah. you exercise, you know. Go Get outside, right take now. a walk. Do some, do some jumping Do some jacks. stretches right now, actually. Just do some basic stretches. Um, still keep watching though because um, yeah. we require your viewership to survive but uh, you know do some basic stretches as we head into map 3 of Hongzhou Spark versus the Guangzhou Charge and it is one apiece as it stands so both teams able to take a map uh, and both teams taking a map in a one-sided affair as well it's always weird when you see that because you try and reflect on it afterwards and you're like well what, what really changed here but I think a big part of it was just the Charge unable to really find an opening and Godspeed coming alive um, but a change of pace, a change of maps now, as we're heading over to Eichenwald. And this is a map that I can actually foresee Charge doing quite well with. Definitely, I think that it suits them. But but both teams, I think, are going to be pretty even. This could be a bit of a slobber knocker that we've got, this Battle of the Joes. Because both teams are pretty evenly matched across the board. And both playing the exact same style, so it comes down to who executes better. See, Godspeed just... Hoping for an opening pick off here. He's spamming these corners. He doesn't want to get too far uh, around the corner because, again, he might be susceptible to Happy just taking his cranium off of an arrow of his own. But you can see Rio. Nice little bit of tech there if you're wondering why he shot the shield up in the sky. It's because it sets his shield off cooldown and he gets a new one on the floor. So his shield, two seconds until it's up there, you can see. You can try that one in your ranked games. He's doing it again. Just a nice little bit of efficiency going out there from the charge. Yeah, very nice. And the Charger just able to keep them at bay. The reduction in shield health that was involved in one of the new patches has kind of changed the dynamic of this a lot. You really can't peek that often. 
you, the shields break almost instantly, so the margin for error is much lower than it used to be with these kind of compositions. Yeah. One of the main reasons you play these comps is not really for the shield, as it much was uh, previously, it's actually for the pick potential with the hold to try and combo up. Um, and you can see the team's trying to make usage of that. Oh, big man of that. Great boop! Right onto Reed. This good orb was there, but Frank, he had da damage mitigation. He could survive to run back his wheel horsey legs back to his team. IDK Spark, though, they have position. Close. IDK is pretty close to his ant matrix here. This could be a game changer for the Hunter squad. Ooh. But there you go. That's that halt again. Straight into the back line. Neptuno gets yoinked up. Sets it up with Godspeed at the Discord orb as well. And they find that out in pick. Neptuno falling is really disastrous right now for the charge. They're going to lack heals. They're going to lack a damage output. They're going to lack a lot here. So they have to make aggressive plays. And that's exactly what they're doing. You see the Transcendence was used. The Ice Wall. They pick off Sassin. And they've managed to find another one onto a door as well. So he may be able to hold this. But Gushway still a threat on the point. Takes out Rio. The Dragon Strike is wonderful. Happy sets it up. Bebe ends up going down. The Holt, last ditch effort there from the Spark, but they're unable to really get more than just a tick. I absolutely love that from Shu, Krong, and Nero. The push on the flank was wonderful. Nero was Aggression. caught out of position, then Krong and Shu go aggressive with him. Shu uses his transcendence, and Nero, realizing that they're pushing, walls off Sashin so that he can't get that immortality field either. A great clutch play to keep charging the point after a, a nice pick from the Spark. Ooh, another nice wall from Nero as well. He locks up Sassin away from his team and they didn't have the damage to burst through the wall to try and heal him up. So taking out Sassin again, just shaving off seconds on the clock. This is what you want to be doing as the charge. If you can get a pick off, you know, you just basically push them back and back and back. And next thing you know, look at them. A minute left on the clock. They've only got a tick. But they do have some ultimates coming online. Oh. But does it even matter when Happy's getting picks like this? One minute left. By the time Bebe gets back in position, there will be only one fight possible. And even then, it's going to be difficult for the Spark to get to the point. They have to navigate the, the flux kind of situation. Bebe does have his trans, though. That is going to be huge. If Sashin can find a good flux, Shu does not have his transcendence available anymore to save his team. So, Spark, so many they're battling against the map geometry, but they do have the better odds. So many odds coming online here. The Dragon was used by Godspeed to try and gain positioning. So, they've got past the choke point. That is key. That's critical for them. Holt doesn't connect onto him as well, so that's going to be off cooldown for Rio. And then Ada just waiting, seeing. It's a it's a game of patience. They're testing the metal of both of these sides. Spamming them in. Ultimate's now going to start to be unleashed here. Gushwe using that supercharger, but Rio answers with one of his own. Gushwe supercharger gets destroyed by Happy. Happy taking an off angle. Blizzard is going to be used onto the point. No one able to really touch this one. No one able to really connect onto the point here, but still winnable now for the Spark. Nice little transcendence being used here by Bebe. Keeps the team alive. Now the Graphitic Flux comes up, and it should be a free kill here onto at least the backline. So maybe one of them. No, not quite. Spark's still in it, still surviving. Prong trying to get the off angles, trying to see if he can hit a couple of these shots, but it looks like the Spark are winning this one out the Battle of Attrition. So Shoe is actually, just yet. Shoe's gonna come back in with a transcendence here. He's trying to run his way in and he's gonna no heal everybody way. up. That is ridiculous managing to turn this one around and no one's able to touch the point. What is that? 84%? That's all the Spark managed to achieve. And that's the issue with the charge. It, unless you you know you, you get rid of them like a nasty bit of roots in the garden, you need to get rid of the roots, the weeds, I should say, you know. You know, you, you ever done gardening, Josh? Yeah, I'm actually uh, wonderful at gardening. I've got right. uh, green and thumbs. Y you green know, fingers. you when it comes to weeds, you got to get them out of the root. The charge are a little bit like a, 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 a weed garden pest. You know, if you don't get rid of every single member of the team, if you leave even one of them on the point, you never know when they're going to turn it. And that's the scenario that we just saw. And the Spark are going to be looking at themselves. They're going to be kicking themselves because they had opportunities, but they just mistimed a couple of things. Yeah. Definitely true. I mean, the picks as well. Bebe uh, getting picked Happy. by Happy just 30 seconds before they were able to engage. That doesn't help. Uh, you know, that incredible play by Shu Kong and Nero on the right-hand side too, when they were able to bust the Transcendence, and then Shu still manages to get up his trance for the final fight and come in and clutch it. That's, yeah. that's really strong play by Shu. Shu has been very impressive on the Zenyatta on map one and now on map three. Team's gonna start to get ready as you can see them. 
little bit of a huddle up in the upper rafters here. What even area is this of Eichenbold? Is it a bar? It's a workshop, it's right? It's a bar. No, look, it's got... Oh, it is a bar. It's, it's yeah. got uh, beer taps. Yeah, but there's, there was a short cinematic with uh, with Reinhardt and Brigitte in it. So yeah, well, what confused me. I think she might use it as a workshop as well. I'm not too sure. Sure, you can work while you drink. Uh, we I mean, can't, but it's <laughs> <we can. laughs> not advisable for us. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people probably are working from home. But that is a great, great opening pick there. On to Bebe, and that that's those holts. That should just win it. You remove the Discord Orb, that's the damage gone now for the Spark, and they get a lot of ground for it as well. You can see them waiting for the shields to get recharged up, and the positioning. Oh, another halt though. Coming out from the Gushway there. That was pretty good. Yeah. Managed to get damage, but not much more. You need to get a pick, you need to capitalize off the halts and Kron with the spam around the corners. They need to start contesting the point, but the Spark are crumbling. They're falling to pieces before our very eyes. The charge just waltzing onto the point. They're making an absolute meal out of it. Look at them. All they've got is a couple of more stragglers to clean up, and that is going to be the map. Surely, if they stay alive, there you have it. Guangzhou charge. Very one sided affair on Eichenwald. And I said it at the start of this, this map at least. I said the Guangzhou charge, it feels like they would be comfortable on this type of map, and they just proved it in spades just now. Yeah, definitely. This is the kind of map that suits them so much, where you can split your team into two kind of portions. You have your tanks rotating. Um, the positioning was all very good from them as well. That was excellent play. That was really a masterclass coming yeah. out from the Guangzhou Charge. And and the Hangzhou Spark didn't do too many things badly, um, but they just didn't get the picks when it was required, and that led to a huge snowball in terms of the ultimates, and they couldn't get the the clutch yeah. moments whereas the charge could uh, this has been such a weird match a very one-sided map one and three for the charge and a very one-sided map two for the spark uh, are we just gonna go all the way to a uh, map five just blow for blow we could we could we really could but it's only one way to find out josh and that's by going to a break we're gonna find out map four coming up after this the overwatch league is brought to you by zip chair gaming the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. All right, well, welcome back. We've got map four coming up shortly. I bet you're expecting a different cast in pair, but no, they <laughs> haven't got rid of us just yet. You're still stuck with us, unfortunately, to learn oh. about gardening, different types of breakfast that you might be eating at this time. If you're from Europe right now, you know, you're in lockdown, you need something to watch. Well, luckily, we've got the Overwatch League here for you, watching the Asian teams, and they have not disappointed. i, I got to say... Uh, I don't really have time to touch on this too much, but what it feels like, at least, uh, what is the edge in these matches, is it feels like the Hongzhou Spark, they have better team play, I would say. Uh, as, a, as a unit, as a team, it feels like they are a little bit better when it comes to working as a team themselves. But the mechanical individual abilities of the Guangzhou Charge is much better, I think, pound for pound. When you match the players up against uh, the Spark, uh, I think you, you're going to end up being much better when you look at the, the Charge. And the Charge can capitalize off that. If they can get the picks needed, they will end up winning out a lot of these series. But when you see maps like Dorado, where Hangzhou Spark can play around the geometry, they play around their cooldowns perfectly, they have the rotations at the right time, the charge don't really get anywhere. So it is this weird juxtaposition between these two teams that we're seeing. And we're going to be heading into Hanamura as the next map. Sideshow Gaming, how do you think this is going to be going? I, I would agree with your analysis, except that I think the team play is kind of fine on Guangzhou. They're just not very proactive. 
they're very good at reacting. They're very good at splitting people up and making um, yeah. reactive decisions when they need to. But they're not that great so far from what we've seen. Of being able to make their own space, of being able to uh, the, the, find the something charge? out of nothing. Yeah, the Guangzhou charge. Yeah, I, I think they showed some reasonable signs of that though. You, you remember when they lost the player just then on Icon Vault early on. I can't quite remember who it was, but they used the initiative. Shu used the transcendence and they walked someone off. That's very that's reactive. reactive. It's right. reactive. Okay. It's instinctual. It's they saw an yeah. opportunity and they went for it. They're not as good at being able to force out cooldowns and create those opportunities themselves. That's why I'm slightly worried for them here on Hanamura. Because pushing into Hanamura against this kind of composition, it's going to be similar to Tomado in my opinion. You are trying to make something out of nothing. And I think their general strat for that is less about controlling space, rotating the cooldowns, and it's more about let's see if we can get a pick. Let's see if Happy is in a position to get a pick. If they can find a pick here, it might look really easy for them. If they can't, we could be seeing another full hole. Shields go down, the Hulk's gonna be traded, and they're just looking for the pickoffs. As you said, Josh, they are trying to find an opportunity to work their way through. But Hanamora, difficult one. The choke point, a lot of similarities, um, if you will, you can tie uh, to Dorado in some sense. Uh, and Godspeed, this is how he was playing on Dorado. He's playing around the fountain on that first point. In this case, he's playing around a giant bell on the point. Um, but the exact same, yeah, they're playing quite patiently and they know that what Happy's looking for is a pickoff. They're looking for an opportunity. Uh, they're keeping their eyes on him and denying him a lot of that with the positioning they're playing. Definitely, but because Hanamura's a much bigger... Oh, this is nice. I love I like this it. from the Guangzhou charge. They've actually found an ability I like to push it. people behind. Okay, rotation comes around here. So now the charge. The Spark have pushed Ooh. in aggressive. So this is a great counter reaction here coming out from the Spark. As soon as you realize you're in a 6v4, they push aggressive. There's no way that Nero and Krong are going to be able to back cap. It's not that kind of composition. So there's no risk whatsoever at taking that 6v4. The charge needed to know that that was coming and uh, set Happy up on an off angle to try and get a pick or something like that. But they can they can still engage now. It's just down to Nero and Krong to make something happen. It's like uh, their own little adventure. I could not think of a worst duo to make a TV series out than May and Sid. But here we have it. The, the initiation comes out as Spark try and take uh, just a little bit of a reactionary gameplay coming out from them. Happy does get the pick off, and the back line was, was meandering around. As you can see, Nero and Krong were finding a pick off onto the point. But again, Spark, they just push straight into them, and they use the halt to try and set up a couple of kills, and it pays off big time. But now, because Happy got that pick off right at the start of that push, the Spark have to back away from the choke. They have to play a bit more passive. Definitely. And you can see that Nero and Krong are in position to reconnect with their team and take a 6v5 now. They're pushing and applying pressure from the top of stairs as the other four are coming in through main. They get the kill onto Gushui because the shields go down so much faster because there's no baby in the fight. Yeah, I gotta say now, it's looking like charges. It's a, it's a home run for them. When you find this many pickoffs, it's a brutal run back from their spawn all the way to this point on Hanamura. And look at this. A Spark even going to be able to contest this? I don't think so. They're going to try to. They're going to try and push their way on. But remember, you're not running a, a Lucio. You can't speed boost your way on. Luckily, we are an era where they are going to get very fast respawns. I believe only three and a half seconds. So look at that. All of Spark already up. If they had done this a couple of patches ago, it would have been a death sentence. So there they made the magic out of nothing. That was what we were criticizing Guangzhou for, is their ability to create opportunities. And they did it there with Kron and Nero. But point B is even more difficult than point A. So let's see what their plan is. I mean, Supercharger comes down from Gushui, but destroyed by Happy. He got no value out of that. A pretty poor Supercharger, if I do say so myself, because I mean, now it's not even like the charge have to kite it back. They are just going to be waiting for their resources to come back up. They're going to be waiting to build up an ultimate or two. And now it is go time. Hulk comes out. Beautiful setup. Adora goes down. But a, a reactionary play from the Hongzhou. Spark. The Dragon Strike comes out and that splits him up, takes out Kron. Yeah, very nice play from Spark. Reading the attack. Even though Hongzhou had set themselves up in a good position. So this is My kind of battering your heads against a brick wall if you Proceed. continue to go top right and just try and cycle abilities. They, they have noted that Sashin and Adora are playing on the left, and you can break that shield to find picks on the main fairly easily. So you yeah. see here where they've got kind of a 2-2 a split with one shield on the balcony and one shield on the high ground. It's easy for them to put pressure on the Sigma here, but the ults are going to be so powerful for the Sparks. 
damage. And now we see the blizzards being rotated between them. Spark finding a pick, but happy as well. Holds it forward. Adora forced to use the ice block and enforcing the Spark's positioning. They have to play aggressively here to try and save their team. They know it's going to be all over. Luckily, they find a pick in the form of Nero. Neptuno follows shortly after. Gushui going down is not going to matter in the grand scheme of things because he does have that much closer respawn. Yeah, I've got to tell you, Bren, I'm not a big fan of that. Nero used his ult in what was like a, a 5... As it's essentially a 5v6 because the Spark are going to get spawners. And then Rio and Neptuno both used their ults as well to try and make a fight winnable. It was at no point winnable. And now the Spark with two minutes left are in a great position to hold this because they have ultimates to work with. They're going to be faster to get their tank ultimates. They're yep. going to be faster to get their blizzard. In a the rotation position. was there. Uh, in terms of the ultimates, they were rotating the ultimates in an effective way. And and now, as you said, they're just holding on to this point. But Happy has this Dragon Strike. This is probably one of the key ultimates they're going to be using to try and break this. It gets the recon, the vision out. And now here comes the Dragon Strike straight up into them. The Fatality Field is there from IDK, which keeps them alive. But Sassin uses the Gravitic Flux. Drops down to the low ground, but Adora falls. These are the kind of openings that you're looking for if you're the Guangzhou Charge. Now Gushui tries to respond with his own Supercharger. He's going to be pumping out a lot of damage here. Kong is in a troubling scenario, but he's pushed onto the low ground, pushes forward, and Assassin is going to go down. Nice little accretion there, but a fortify in time from Gushui. The longer this fight goes on, it should theoretically be better for Spark, but the Charge have not lost anyone just yet. Yeah, the charge have done a great job here of being able to get into position. The ults, though, are just Ooh. starting to come up, and Kron gets totally Keep frozen. Keep alive! And the trans. Yeah, it's can't not say enough. It. They burst him through with the amplification matrix. The transcendent healing wasn't enough. And now the Spark are in a great position to try and hold on to this one now. They expended a lot of ultimates to use it, but that pick on Krong was the opening one. That's the one they needed. Spam from Nero, the icicles from afar. Maybe enough if you can get a stray headshot or two. You see them still trying to push this one up. Nero uses the ice block again defensively. Not going to have that one. Dragon Strike forces out the Transcendence. He kills Spark IDK. have to try and make a move. IDK somehow falls. Nero is halted back there if by Nero Rio. If Nero gets this Blizzard, Bren, this could be absolutely game-changing. They've managed to stay in control of all of this space, and Nero is building up to a game-changing Blizzard. Looking for it now. Still holding on. The Spark, they need to get a pick off here. If they want Trying to defend this one. Nero, the blizzard gets laid down. Gushui has to fortify so he survives. Turns his back to them, but destroyed. Taken out of the fight. Godsby switching over to the Woodmaker. A last ditch effort for him to try and make something work, to make something happen. Baby, he's rotated himself all the way down into the background here, laying in the damage from afar, seeing if he can get anything done. The charge still in control once more. Happy with the headshot onto Adora, taking out the necessary targets. No one is contesting to Bebe, but I don't think it matters. Still, we're looking for that second tick now. We start to see the stall heroes coming out. Got to be onto the tracer, but recalls away. Does not have that on cooldown, and he will fall. The charge, they manage to find their way back onto the point. Neptuno moving over to the Moria just so he can get back into the fight in time. And they are building up these ultimates effectively. Happy uses the Dragon Strike, takes out Sassin. They need just a couple of picks. Bebe being assaulted in the back line. That was their one opportunity, their one advantage that they had to try and win this one. It's going to be so, so tough for them now as Gushui gets pressured on a sliver of HP. And finally, he will fall. Godsby tries his best. Not quite good enough. And there it is, the Guangzhou charge. I am actually very impressed by the way they managed to hold on to that point. Normally, when fights go to distance like that, even with the overtime ticking, it gets a little bit more in their favor. But they held on to that for so long. And all they needed to do was slip up once, and the spark would have been back in that. Yeah, beautiful patience coming out from Guangzhou. And that, I think, is really what seals it for them. They don't rush, even though the timer is ticking down. They don't give up their advantageous position. They don't push too far forward on the point so that they can die. They just set up in great, kind of like a semicircle, looking at the spawn and looking at the players trickling onto the point building up those ults. The ults from the Spark just have to be thrown out before they die, but the Guangzhou Charge can be selective with when they use them because they were so patient and perfect with their positioning there. That was a great push on Hanamura. Even though they only get the two points with no time remaining, I think that was very well executed for Guangzhou. Well, as we head into the match now, you can see once more, both sides are going to be rolling out here. A wonderful performance from the Guangzhou Charge, able to hold on to that. And it is that mechanical skill that really pushes them over the edge.
in my book. I'm right. a big fan of a lot of the individual players here. I had them high up in my individual power rankings. Uh, Spark will be looking to see if they can attack and potentially get a better time. Maybe some uh, some time bank on top would be lovely for them. But it all starts here as the doors are going to open up. And this is an interesting one. Adora coming over to the Genji, but instantly switches back. Maybe he's just trying to look for a reflect on something coming through. But he's going to be switching back over to the Mei. So mirror comps almost for both of these teams. Guangzhou running Shu and Neptuno. And running the Ana and a lot of healing output here for Guangzhou Cha. That's him moving forward. They managed to find a little bit of an entryway here to this corridor. Spark is going to start to try and play aggressively into them. If they can get a pick off here, could be beautiful for them. A lot of damage being put down. The immortality field shorted and put down very early on here. Maybe it brings down Rio. Losing your main tank, not ideal, but the they have to play aggressive and they do just that. Sass falls. They lose a tank, they trade it out, but still, this is a good position right now for the Spark. A better position for them, if you will. Because of the spawn situation, the way it works. It's going to take a while for Rio to get back into the fight. Pick on the shoot. That's excellent. Gonna turn things around massively. Without the healing, there's no way that the charge can actually take this fight. They're going to go for it, obviously, but they, there's no way. They're just going to get bullied. Yeah. They're just going to get bullied off of the point here. You see them trying to make it work. Although, unless Happy pick on the assassin, maybe Happy can finds kill everyone. One. If Happy can get a 6k, maybe it's winnable. I mean, I've, I've seen stranger things happen. Leaps around to the back line, but Bebe shuts him down. He's like, hey, listen, Sunshine, get off my plot of land. Like a farmer. There's a man attempts to walk across his land, across the entirety of Wales in a straight line. And he digs, quite them, out by the, digs them out by the weeds. Digs yeah, the weeds digs out, them out by the weeds. The weeds, the weeds, know, the weeds by like the that. roots. There's analogies that we can work on. That's probably one of the, uh, the, one of the things we can work on. Uh, believe than what the Guangzhou charge had. And a decent ult bank here as well. They've got the halt and the supercharger, which are always so useful for cracking open areas like this. Kronk's really got to be careful. What? He gets Kronk! Closer. Oh no, you fool of a took. He's been demacked. He's taken out. The immortality field is there to try and keep him alive. He does stay alive, but the trouble is, I mean, he doesn't have a mech. He's pretty much out, but happy, happy, happy. Oh, 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 sneaky boy. Oh, for the back line here. He wants to try and find the pick off. The recon hour guns out. He's trying to get positioning right now. Spots one. This is so crucial. This is his time to shine right now. Forces out the transcendence. I mean, that's not bad, but the trouble is right now, the Spark are getting picks. If you're a charge fan, it's not ideal. Christian comes out, connects onto the two of them. Spark are rolling this one in. Wonderful pick us for them. Nero tries to clutch it, sends out the blizzard, but to no avail. Four minutes on the clock right now, and now it is a stagger time. Kong out of position has set this one up for the Spark. They are rolling with it, and three minutes, 54 seconds in their time bank. That is magical for the Spark. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. Even though Guangzhou played their offense really well, a couple of slip-ups on the defense, and they just gift the Spark an enormous time bank. Yeah. Happy absolutely needed to kill Bebe there in one shot before Bebe even realized that he was under attack, uh, and he failed. And the Transcendence, and then a pick from Godsby, and it's all over. Uh, Happy makes a, a big play, or attempts to make a big play, and it just doesn't work. But, but that's not the reason that they lost. The reason that they lost is because instead of trying to mirror with the shields and play a very stable really style, bad. they tried to play the Reinhardt and the D.Va, which is all about being able to brawl and be able to escape with the D.Va. And instead, Krong was caught napping and just got demacked immediately. I mean, you, you just can't allow that to happen when you play in that yeah. composition, otherwise your, your Reinhardt then gets rolled. There's just so many more ways that you can collapse. It's a little safer to play the double shield because that shield is very much a physical barrier that stops you being in harm's way. The charge have an absolute mountainous ordeal to try and get themselves over. Uh, it is four minutes in the time bank here for the Spark to just get a single tick. Um, should be quite easy if you've watched the Sparks offense last round. Um, but we will see now if they can manage to do it. The charge, all eyes on them to try and make some magic happen. They're going to be relying on Happy 
do just happy things, which is, of course, getting those pickoffs. And the Spark are doing something interesting here. They look like they want to make a wholesale switch up. They realize we just need a single tick, so you know what we're going to do? Oh, it's dive time, baby. We're going to build up the Nano Blade. We're going to let Gooshway get a couple of initiations with the Power Driver. And that's all we have to do. That's how we take this. I quite like this. Uh, it could completely fail. That's very possible. But I like this because they only need a single tick. And it's when you mirror, you're either going to full complete or get full hell. But with this composition, you're always pressuring the back lines. You're always trying to pull and stretch the Gongjo Chark's composition around. So it becomes more difficult for them to adapt to it. Which way goes down, though? They're doing a good job of, I think, mitigating what the Spark are attempting to do. You look at the positioning of the Spark right now. Positioning. Excuse me. They've got me. Hiding away. Luckily, we're not in an arena right now, but the, the crowd will be ooming and ahhing. Trying to give it something away, but they, the chat should recognize that they have players behind them right now. As you can see, Gushui is just uh, rolling around, and this is the kind of set of plays that they need. They need to try and get a kill or two. Beautiful! Shots coming in from Godsby here, unloading the lead. Shield comes out though, and appeal is there from the rest of the team, but this is what the Spark are trying to achieve. They're surrounding them, and also trying to divide them, conquer them if they will, if they can. Shots pumping out, trying to get something out onto Rio here. The key now is going to be for the Gonja Charge to try and survive this. Losing Rio is not good, not good at all, but still winnable here for the charge. Blizzard now for Nero, he might opt to be using this one. The trouble is, what target are you even connecting this onto? Nero has to use his ice block to survive. The immortality field as well. Amplification matrix. The bomb by God's speed doesn't find anything, and they've torn through have. them. This is no ultimate's really another, even necessary here. Uh, another happy up where, big if they want to try and spin this one, but well it's just not going to be happening. War of attrition far too much, and the pickoffs were there for the spark, and they're going to end up taking map number four. We have gone the absolute distance here, Josh. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Yeah, uh, talking in a camera. Taking audio off. Um, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, sure. One, two, three, four, f- four, five, six, seven, Test one, eight, two, nine, three, four, ten. five, six, ten. You're gonna count up again, Josh. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No. Not muted. One, two, three, four. Test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's unmuted. Joe's and it's me average Joe I've kicked Bren off the cast because I wasn't happy with his performance um, th- tonight I think he was the reason that we had these weird swaps between performance level in these two teams so I've, I'm trying to run a controlled experiment here so I've, I've kicked him out we might get we might bring him back in a little bit later on but for now we're headed into Nepal to try and decide which team is gonna take it all uh, I, and I'm going to be bringing you the action to just all by my lonesome. Uh, so far, we've had a really weird match. It's been like both teams have been playing the meta compositions, uh, but they've been trying to find opportunities to engage, to break certain points, and it seems like it's very map dependent on which team ends up getting the better end of it. Uh, it's it's strange to contrast that to the Chengdu versus Shanghai game, where it, both were just attacking each other all over the place. But um, 
we're heading into Nepal here, and I've just realized that I actually can't do play-by-play. -play, so <laughs> I, I'm afraid that Bren is actually going to have to come back in. I didn't really think this one through at all, did I? Um, I'm back. I'm back. You can't get rid of me that easily. At least I hope I'm back. Sorry about the uh, the audio delay, guys. Obviously, a lot of moving parts when you um, decide to move an entire offline system to online uh, with a week's notice. So, um, obviously, I you appreciate you guys actually, sticking with us. Actually, I preferred it when you were gone. Can you go again, please? I mean, you don't get rid of me that easily, pal. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, you're going to you're gonna have to blackmail me or something. I don't know. Uh, but oh, we're I've heading got, into I've it. I've got material. I've got material. I'm, I'm sure. I'm, actually, a lot of people do, Josh. That's a scary thing. I mean, there's videos <laughs> out there. There's a lot. But uh, you got the Hangzhou Spa versus the uh, Guangzhou Charge. Map 5. It's gone the distance, as we suspected, between these two teams. Battle of the Joes, I think is the nickname that we're giving it. Um, and so far, we have seen the Guangzhou Charge absolutely decimate the control map, um, at least the first time these teams clashed earlier in this series. Uh, you would expect the Guangzhou to have an advantage coming into this one as well. I mean, this one's very different though. It's much scrappier. It's, it favors the kind of Wrecking Ball style of play. So I think that the Hangzhou Spark are actually looking like they're in a better position to take it. If I had to bet, I think they're the team to take it in this final one. Because the disruption that Gushui is going to do on this Wrecking Ball is going to be enormous. It just, a lot of it comes down to how good God, uh, Bazzi's uh, Tracer can really be, because Godspeed then is forced over to the Genji just to accommodate Bazzi. We'll see. You can see it's the uh, the Ryan Diva being ran by the charge. Godspeed just trying to get a couple of off angles, see if he can build up the blade. Laying in the damage. Please keep it doing work. He's finding an opening, at least off onto the side here, as Assassin falls very, very low. But no side really opening up the point as of yet. Not able to find a pick. They're looking for them. Happy with the armor pack is almost an immovable object in a certain sense. Being pressured in the back line here by Bazzi. Has to recall the way. Kushway falls very low. The wall. We're trying to split apart the spark to see if the charge can a pick or two, but it's difficult for them. But now we see the Nana being used greatly from Shu as well. The mechanics are definitely there. Happy having to find the hammer. The pulse pump comes out, boom, forward. Happy, oh no, 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 caught out of position. Still alive though, but not for much longer, it feels like, whereas the rest of the charge are just crumbling, falling to pieces. And the Spark are going to be able to capitalize and take this first opening round, or at least get the first capture of it. Very nice work. Bazzi finding both of the uh, players in the back line there. Really nice from him and great disruption from Gushue. My big question mark for the Spark is whether Godsby and Bazzi can be an effective Genshi Tracer duo. Bazzi has been good on Tracer when he's played it in the past. It's one of his better heroes actually. It's what he's played a lot of. But an Overwatch League kind of level, not so much. So. The fact that Bazzi's able to have a large impact in that first fight indicates very good things for the Spark, but Gushue getting caught out there does not. Yeah, but he got stun locked there. The flashbang and the shield bash were timed up perfectly. They locked him up, probably asleep to set it up as well. Gushue going down has opened this up, but the thing about Wrecking Balls is they can get back in easily enough, and now it's late time for Godsby. He's whip-shotted backwards. He's trying to find an opening. He gets a pick at least onto Rio. That's better than one was expecting from that one. The Spark are still holding on to this one. As I said, Gushue was immediately back in the fight. Even if you get a pick onto the Wrecking Ball, they have so much mobility, they're able to just make it straight back in. It's almost as if they never left. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure about the charge there from Rio. If you noticed, Godsby used his blade to try and get aggressive onto Neptuno, and Neptuno whipshot him away. So Godsby would have been totally useless, except that Rio gifted himself like a fine dining platter to be monged upon. And Godsby just gobbled him up and used yeah. the dash reset to be able to uh, execute onto other people. It's incredibly important that the Guangzhou Charger are able to execute with these ultimates coming up here. They, they can't lose a player early on. Fazi had the armor pack, he survived it! Oh my word, the explosions are all over the place. Self-destruct and a post-bomb, a deadly combo in the right hands. And the Spark, I think they might have just done it on round number one at least. We are 95% in counting. Don't want to count the charge out just yet, but those pickoffs have been Pretty huge form. You can see Kron trying to go oh. for it, but look at that Earth Shatter! Four people, I think, just went down. Rio clutching it up. What is it about this section in Nepal? Huge Earth Shatters. It seems almost synonymous with one another. And you can see that has opened it up, and the charge, they needed a miracle play like that. Rio delivered. 
It only seems like yesterday that we were casting the Washington Justice as they were in a map vice series on Nepal. And Raw hit a five-man shadow in the exact same position. Rio coming out clutch there for his team. Uh, the Washington Justice did not win that series. And uh, I'm getting the same kind of vibes here, honestly, as well. Because IDK is switching back over to the Ana, and the Spark is still in a great position. The, the Blizzard, which would be such an incredible ultimate normally, is not very good against the hyper-mobile comp that the Spark really are not. running. So, a lot of this is going to just, again, come down to execution. Pulling the Guangzhou charge apart and trying to look for individual kills. Gushu is waiting patiently in the back line as a good ball player would. They'll be trying to set up now. The bombs come down, pile drive. It's a classic combo. You're going to try and put them, push them into the bombs and sap. God's been out with the blade. Dash reset is there. Goes for the deflect, but they, oh my goodness! You mistimed it! And Happy, he's punished you! The 3k for him! Two with the dead eye, follows it up. It's those kind of clutch plays that the charge, they are known for. And uh, I gotta say, a bit of a misplay by Godsby as well, that deflect. I believe he may have wall climbed or cancelled it. That's unfortunate, really unfortunate, but Happy comes up with the goods exactly when it's required. They'll need to do that another two times though. The, the speed and tempo at which the Spark can play with this composition means they'll have multiple opportunities to recontest this. No ults on the board as well, apart from Krong's defense. Uh, self-destruct, sorry. And Krong's self-destruct, unlikely catch very much. Just wait. Just uh, kind of grappling his way through the map, seeing if he can set up a play onto a few of them. A lot of good wrecking ball players, they need a bit of patience as well, just waiting to find the perfect moment to sweep your way in there, force the positioning in your favor. The and now, spark. the spark, they flip the point. They flip the point and send the self-destruct into the back as well. That doesn't really find anything, and Kronk just requires to use the self-destruct to remake. Okay, big Bionade from IDK. Next on to two, but no one's really capitalized off of it, but they still are in control of the point. Now Happy goes to try and clutch this one. Nanabush used, but the dead eye doesn't really get anything at all. In fact, another huge Bionade from IDK. Connect on to Rio and Shu. They are in a disasterly position. And Fazzy with a pick on to Happy. I gotta say, Godby with this blade might just be the cleanup they need. And there you go. The Spark able to just push out the charge away from the point. They get the capture. And at that point, it was just a matter of time waiting for the Oldermans to build up. It certainly was. The next two maps, or the next two rounds, the next two stages, whatever you want to call them, they, uh, the, the, that was a bit of a Brennism. <laughs> I think I'm yeah, I mean, I'm affecting you. you, honestly. Yeah. The anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is these next two stages, the Sanctum and Village, play much more into the way that the Guangzhou Charge would like to play. It's it's more confined areas. It's more um, pushing into a high ground and a low ground when you talk about Village or a, a bunch of different choke points when you talk about Sanctum. But instead, the Charge are actually opting into this. Ooh, the ball. Zarya. This we saw a lot of this in the Gladiators versus Shock match. Actually, didn't work out for the Shock. Yeah, I mean I can see the idea behind the comp. Obviously, you use the uh, the, sh the the Zarya's projected bubbles to try and uh, get something in. Doomfist needs that almost actually uh, when it comes to this one yeah. because you're committing all your cooldowns to try and get a pick. You you need something to try and get out alive. The Zarya bubble provides that. But now that you can see this is the the, the real game that's at hand here because the point in control of the spark and they cap it up early and the chargers are happy to give this up but if they can give it up and get a pick it's worthwhile Bebe falling means you don't have the discord orb anymore you don't have the heals and the spark are uh, actually probably just gonna fall to pieces here nice initiation by nero gets whip shotted backwards gushray falls was so an instant recap and that was really nicely done by the charge i have to say it certainly was they prioritized the kills over the objective which is what you should do at the beginning of these kind of control maps now it comes down to how well they can stick people into the choke. The Diva from Sashin is much better at controlling space. And Krong really is just about trying to output damage and facilitate Nero. So Nero, yep. a lot of responsibility on him to carry this this round and keep the charge in the series. Well, Pulse Bomb is ready for Bazzi if he wants to try and use it. Try and clutch this one up. They need oh, it. Oh, Nero. That is a beautiful amount he of bullets. Takes the, oh. takes the banana boost to keep Nero up. Like very, very, very low to punch of the Bazzi! He just walked straight into him! Provided him the, the, the shield he needed to survive, if you will. 
doesn't want to try and size him slam. In fact, he's got no abilities to use. He gets caught out of position, but Gushwe gets knocked, I believe, off the edge there by Rio. Environmental kills are bound. Gosby has the blade, but the question is, you want to use that against the rallying Brigitte? Are you mad? That's just schoolboy errors there from Godsby. And I've got to say, maybe the pressures get into him a little bit. Yeah, that was not a great play coming out from Godsby. He saw an opportunity, but just blinker vision onto the Brigitte. And he's opened the door here for the Guangzhou charge. They're making full scale changes on the side of the Spark, switching over to that normal meta composition of the May, the McCree, but this time the Rhine and the Zarya to try and bully their way through the choke point. Maybe use a bubble to try and get your way in, muscle your way through, stop Nero from punching somebody and getting an early kill. Yeah. The so, grab, yeah. though, is already up for Kong. And that's one of the another win condition. If this comp space works jam. out, exactly, able to get the space jam combo up for real. Here we go. Power driver gets shielded away. So Gushwe was there, ready and waiting. Nero just still waiting for the go button. The opportunity, big punch onto the wall here. Now it's go time. There you go, lay it down, and no one's able to touch the point. You don't even need the kills. The grab did all the work. And I gotta say that comp, when it works, it works. But the danger is always, you know, not being able to get a great foothold, not being able to build up the ultimate effective to make it work. But there we have it, one, one, a piece. Map five, these teams could not be more even. <laughs> they really couldn't. And they're both trying the same kind of stuff. Spark set the tempo early on this map by playing more of the IV disruption style with the Wrecking Ball. But now it's the charge that are taking that style away from them and playing it better, I want to say. Nero on the Farah, I've been wanting this this entire series, so yeah. I'm glad that we're finally going to be able to see it. I think that the disruption and the pressure that comes down from Rio on the Wrecking Ball and Nero on the Farah gives Charge the advantage here. Unless Godsby hits some insane shots. Rio is one of the players who I would personally consider to be one of the best or one of the better Wrecking Balls in the league. Um, he's almost yeah. fallen to the wayside. always takes that title. Yes, Eamon always takes that title, but he kind of falls within the shadow of Eamon, but still very, very serviceable. Yes. And, and this is the idea behind the comp, as you mentioned, Josh. Nero's going to try and pump in the damage. Ooh. It's up to the Spark to get picks like that. If Bazzi can hit those Icicles onto Happy, one of the more susceptible targets, and he can get those insta-kills, that's how you set it up, and the freeze into the pin. I mean, it's an unorthodox combo, but it works. And now when the Spark have control of this point, finding a little bit more difficulty for the Guangzhou Charge to try and reach this one. However, they did use the Resurrect here onto Shu, so they have the heals now. And this is what the Charge are looking to achieve. They're trying to surround this point, pump in the spam damage, but the Spark are realistically holding all the cards when they're holding in this point. point. Guangzhou Charge were running Eileen here, then maybe a Doomfist Fire would have been an opportunity. Or would have been an option, rather. But Happy, that's really not in his wheelhouse. It's gonna be hard for them to recontest this pool. They do have to poke from Nero, but Happy's gonna have to do some crazy work. Coalescence doesn't really get too much. Brings him up very, very low. And I spoke too soon. Nero was set up there for the barrage. That was the one-two combo. Shu just getting the trickle damage needed to set them down low enough for Nero to really take advantage of it still. Spark are in control at this point, and it looks like they want to fight it. Bebe ends up using his transcendence, keeping his team topped up. And there's no Bionade to try and negate that kind of healing. Happy, trying to work his way around there. Nero ends up collecting the kill onto Bebe. Eventually, it feels like Charge should retake this one. Not without a fight here, as you can see, Gushway moves back into the fight, finally spawned. Happy using the pulse bomb will get the D-Mech here, and they have to start expending ultimates here, because it's getting a little bit saucy, it's getting a little bit spicy. Spark still able to try and recontest this. The wall will allow them control of the point once more. And the Spark are actually retaking this one. Gushwe, though, doesn't have heals. His teammate just came in in the nick of time, but Bebe on the Moira was not enough to keep him up. The charge, as long as they clean up... Uh, as long as they clean up Godsby, as they do, they are going to be able to recap this one. Yeah, that was a lot more shaky than it should have been, because Shu keeps getting picked. Shu's died twice now at the hands of Gushwe in... Areas where he really shouldn't be dying when he's on the Moira. They're starting to build up ults now, though, so they have the opportunity to use grab. The thing is, who do you grab here and what value do you really get out of it? Uh, unless Nero has a barrage up, then, okay, maybe you can grab one player, maybe two players max and get the kills on them, and then it's effective. But Kronk just really needs to throw it out and get whatever picks he can. Yeah, and uh, I mean, even if you get a solo grab onto Gushwe, that's often worthwhile. 
the real question mark for me is this switch up over now, over to a composition that's relying on this nano blade. Yes, you kind of need only really one team fight, and maybe you can get a couple of pick offs if you coordinate it enough. The charge, they're kind of in control of this right now. The pulse bomb connects here onto Gushra, brings him very low, and he has to skirt his way back out of it. Nero's going to be traded one for one, but the Coalescence is going to be doing so much damage to them right now. And the heals, as long as it's there. Neptuno does fall, but true, he needs to stay alive. 44 HP, backs his way around the corner. Krong cleaning up the remnants on this point. That is necessary right now for the charge. Happy is absolutely outplaying Vazi when it comes to the Tracer situation. And, and with speed on Genji, where he's a little less comfortable than he is on Tracer, I dare say, uh, this comp, I don't think they have the ability, the individual mechanical skill, no. to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Guangzhou for charge. You have to get a pick now off of this, because you're not building up the ultimate. There's not enough time. So this nice. pull from Vazi, it's got to be huge. Shu moves back here, but Krong's going to be looking to try and get a nice grab off. Try and push him away from the point, if you will. Look at him. Any sort of solo grab might work. And they pull them off the point with the grab! Guangzhou charge! They take them series! They take them up, they take the series, they take it all! And just an absolute ludicrous display. Guangzhou charge. What just, a series, though. I mean, so that, back and that's forth. absurd. But, and both teams really showcasing that they can play that more disruptive style. But the Guangzhou Charge <laughs> has the individual ability to be able to play whatever comp they want to play, yeah. as long as their teamwork is down. And the, the maps that they ended up really losing badly on were the maps where it's more difficult to be able to push and where you're, you're I mean, yeah. specifically... Get the pickoffs or... Yeah, yeah where, yeah, where they had to really make, make magic happen. Um, but... In terms of the, the depth on this roster, they've they've got it all. Guangzhou yeah. Charge looking pretty solid tonight, even though it was a 3-2 series. And it's hard to think of really a, a, a solid segment or a solid player of the match here. But I'm definitely, maybe it's my internal biases. I'm leaning towards Happy as an individual um, for, for really turning up there. But you can honestly give it to quite a lot of the, the players, I think, on the Guangzhou Charge. Yeah, I think they, they played fairly well as a team. Um, I think that Shu was pretty impressive Shu. while he was playing the Zen Yatta. Um, and I liked what I saw from, from Krong as well. I think Happy is kind of a, a good default position to go for, though, because he found the picks yeah. and uh, found the, the important kills on the maps that they won when it mattered. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. The Guangzhou Charger, I've been a, a fan of that team. I like the um, players that they've put together. And this is a, a good solid win over another competitive team. I, I thought this game would be very even, very difficult to call who the winner would be. And uh, it turns out the, the teams themselves couldn't even really decide, flip-flopping all over the place until the very final round. Well, that's going to do it for us uh, here for the Asian games, at least. I want to give a special thank you to everybody watching us as well um, for sticking through You know some of the technical issues um, that we had a little bit earlier. But also want to give a special thank, uh, thank you to the production staff that you guys aren't seeing behind the scenes because these guys have been working around the clock non-stop to try and bring you these games and these trying times and lord knows they are necessary you know everyone's a little bit bored in quarantine we need a bit of a distraction from the world these days so i do want to give a special thank you for that but in terms of the games themselves uh, that's going to be it for the asian games but at 12 30 pacific time there is going to be the Watchpoint pre-show, which is going to be taking place. And we're going to be seeing even more matches a little bit later on. So you can go more to sleep Overwatch. now. More Overwatch. Thank you very much for joining us, everybody, for the Asian Games. In a couple of hours' time, you're going to be seeing even more for Day 2 of Week 8. Thank you very much, and we'll see you then.